Hello, everybody. This is part two of a three-part series going over how to solve for electric motor noise using ANSYS. In part one, I showed you how to calculate the electromagnetic forces in Maxwell. And now in part two, I'm going to go over how to import those forces into ANSYS Workbench and then set up the Workbench project. And, going, and then I'll go over how to solve the modal analysis. In part three, I'll show you how to solve the harmonic response and go over some, some basic post-processing. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up a fresh session of Workbench, and we're gonna go into Import, and we're gonna navigate to our uh, Maxwell project that we saved, and we're gonna open that up. And once this is open, we're just gonna go ahead and double click um, and to open up Maxwell again. Inside Maxwell, we're gonna go into under Optometrics and double click on the default Design Explorer setup. And what we wanna change here is the embedded parametrics analysis. We wanna change this to parametric setup one. And this is that parametric sweep that we set up at the end of the last video. Um, next, go to Options and click Save Fields and Mesh again. Hit OK. And that's it, and we're done in Maxwell. So we can minimize that. Now, the next thing we want to do, the next main step here, is to do a modal analysis. So first, we'll bring a modal analysis in. I'm going to click and drag on that and drop it right here. Next, we're going to add in our harmonic response. And we're gonna to wanna to pass the solution of the modal analysis into the setup of the harmonic response. So to do that, I'm gonna drag and drop, drop harmonic response onto the solution block in modal. Once that's done, it'll automatically add all of these connections in. Next, we're also gonna to wanna to pass the solution of our Maxwell uh, simulation into the harmonic response as well. So to do that, click on solution and drag that over into setup. Uh, the next step is to add the geometry in to our modal and harmonic response blocks. Next, we need to import our geometry into our modal and harmonic response. So to do that, we're going to right-click on geometry, go to import geometry and browse, and then I'm going to go to wherever you navigate to wherever you have the geometry saved and select open. Once all of our workbench connections are set up, we need our geometry imported, we're ready to go into mechanical. Uh, inside mechanical, first thing you always want to do is check your units. So make sure your units in here are the same units you used in Maxwell to set this problem up. So for me, I use RPMs, so make sure you have RPMs selected. Uh, next, what you want to do, all of our forces we, we calculated are on the tips. Remember, on the inside tips of these teeth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a name selection on the inside faces of all of these tips. Okay, so now you can see I have created the name selection for the inside surfaces on all of my the tips of all of my teeth. And I've also created a name selection for the three bolt holes that I have. You'll need something similar for um, in your in your simulation as well, depending on the uh, boundary conditions of your motor. So with that, I'm going to make a fixed support by right-clicking on modal, going to insert fixed support, and I'm going to <clears throat> make that fixed support on the name selection, which I called bolts. So now I have a fixed support on those three bolt holes. For the purposes of post-processing, I'm going to make a cylindrical coordinate system right at the center of the geometry. So I'm going to right-click on coordinate systems, go to insert coordinate system. And then instead of Cartesian, I'm going to switch that to cylindrical. And uh, instead of geometry selection under the origin, I'm going to use, make that as global coordinates. Finally, I'm going to be going into analysis settings. I'm going to change the max modes defined from the default of six up to 250. And I'm going to limit the search to range and say yes. That way we're only looking inside the frequencies that we're interested at and we're not looking at frequencies outside of our, our motor speeds. Uh, so for me, I'm changing the range maximum 
to 25,000 hertz. So with that, our modal analysis is all set up and ready to run. So we'll right click on that and hit solve. So that does it for video number two. In part three, we're gonna be looking at how to set up the harmonic response and finish with um, setting up a waterfall diagram. This video is brought to you by Ozen Engineering, an ANSYS Elite Channel Partner. We use physics-based simulation to solve multidisciplinary engineering problems. We specialize in FEA, CFD, and high and low frequency electromagnetics. For more information, you can email us at info at ozeninc.com, call us at our office phone number, or visit our website at www.ozeninc.com.